1, 1, 2, ça tourne Ok. Hey, salut, c'est le doute de dasosup.com. Bienvenue dans l'épisode numéro 9 de Chilling Wiss. On prend le bleu. Comme vous le savez, nous, chez dasosup.com, on aime ça la beatmaker musique. Mais les gars, vous ne pouvez pas vous pointer à des contests, appuyer sur un pad, lâcher un ou deux pas de danse en nous regardant et croire que ça va nous faire kiffer parce que c'est pas vrai. C'est pourquoi. Ok, celle-ci tu la gardes, mais toutes les autres tu les effaces par contre. Et pour de vrai cette fois-ci, pas comme la dernière fois, hein. c'est pourquoi j'ai appelé mon ami Pedro, le beatmaker de la formule, vainqueur du TKO, merci beaucoup, pour vous montrer quelle heure il est, de quoi il s'agit, le live beatmaking les gars. <rire> Bruit d'explosion, gros kick, gros snare dans ta face. droit à la prod. Hip-hop station. Round one. Fight. Hey guys. Hello. What's going on? How are you? Good. Good, good, good. Mathieu, nice to meet you. Hey man. Yo. Mathieu? How's it going? I brought a beer. <laughs> cool. All right, all right. A French beer. Yeah. I hope you don't mind. You Where did mind? you get it? <laughs> thanks for coming, guys. Hey, thanks for having us, uh, man. Thank you. Uh, it's cool, it's cool. If one of you feels like putting up some music, you can go ahead and... Put some music on? Yeah. Uh, so Whatever you want. All right. Go ahead. Let's see what we can do here. <sighs> so... I heard it's your first time in Europe. It's my first time in Europe. Came over with Ugly Heroes. How do you like it so far? I the ladies it. and <laughs> actually, we only been off the plane for like yeah, a few hours seen, now. Yeah, we've seen we've seen two uh, two women. Two women, probably. Yeah. Really? So, yeah. Yeah. Were they hot or? <laughs> yeah, they're good looking. Yeah. Women are good, man. The food was good. We ate at a little pizza place. Yeah, so far so good. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you guys uh, dropped uh, an album this year. The three of you being ugly heroes. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The three of you, not just you two plus him. Yeah. It's the three of you. Yeah, it was yes. actually Apollo's, Apollo Brown was, the, was the, 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 he created this group. All right. So, yeah, we, we, me and uh, Red Pill and I didn't even know each other. And Apollo recruited us to form the super group that is Ugly Heroes. I had never met him. Yep. I right. actually, I hate, I hate him. I don't like this guy. Yeah, it was kind of, so, it was kind of my idea, terrible. put them together. <laughs> I had worked with him previously on uh, solo projects, and um, you know everybody that knows me knows that I don't I don't work with people that I'm not a fan of, so and I'm fans of both of these respectively, and um, I just thought it would be uh, really dope to uh, start a group from scratch, you know, from the ground up and build yeah. a brand, and then uh, you know I thought of these guys and putting them together in two different sounds, but they they they're cohesive. You know, and it worked. It, it was it was perfect. Cool. Ugly heroes being people working every day and stuff like that. Can you explain a little bit what ugly heroes is? Yeah, I think for me it's just an. I think you feel it on the record that for me what it's all about is you know we're from the midwestern part of the United States, which is very blue collar. It's working class people. You know, my dad was a a delivery man on a on a truck. That I grew up around that, all around that, and we saw, you know, the automotive industry is there, it's manufacturing, it's, uh, it's people that work, work their asses off every day, and 
don't get a lot of respect for it, but still have a lot of heart and still wake up every morning and do their job and come home to their family. And that's, that was, I think, the distinction that we wanted to make. Like, I don't deal drugs. I've never done anything like that. But, you know, and I don't deal with a lot of that stuff. We're the people, we're more the average person, I think. I think we relate yeah. more with the average people. Ugly heroes in the middle of the spectrum. I mean, you got one side of the spectrum and you have the whole totally opposite side. I think we're in the middle. Ugly heroes, to me, are um, the everyday people that make the world go around. You know, your average people. Your average people that go grocery shopping on Sundays, get up to, for work on Monday, and, you know, come home to make their kids dinner at night after work. You know Except what I'm saying? Except we like, just happen to be really good at rapping and making music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, I mean, we, we, we make music for those people, though. For the people, the average, everyday individual. You know, blue-collar workers, mechanics. Um, servers, you know, regular people, people who work in the plant, you know. Zookeepers. <laughs> yeah. Zookeepers. Gardeners. Man. They got hard jobs. They got hard jobs. Just job. normal people. Yeah. No, but just, you know, it's, it's just uh, just everyday people, man. Yeah. You know, that's that's kind of what an every, ugly hero is. Without ugly heroes, there wouldn't be anything. You wouldn't be, that chair would not be there. These turntables wouldn't be here. You know, none of this stuff would be here. All right. You know? So, make the world go round. Cool. Detroit is a really struggling place right now. Well, I know you're not from Detroit, you're from Chicago, but it's a really dark city too. Uh, how does it affect you to see you, your own city struggling like that with the bankruptcy and everything? How do you... I mean, you know, Detroit has its ups and downs. Detroit's a beautiful city. It's a beautiful city with a lot of character and a lot of people don't really get the glimpse that we get, you know, living there. And uh, they see it, you know, they see the media and they see what everybody else talks about. But you come to Detroit, I mean, there's a lot of great aspects of Detroit. And it's coming back, it's coming back. I mean, there's a lot of hardworking people. Perseverance, you know, is all throughout Detroit. So it'll be all right. But I mean, it affects your music. You know, it plays a big part in your mood, your everyday mood, you know. It's, People tend to be, you know, a little different on, on gloomy days versus yep. days that the sky is blue and the sun is out, you know? So it affects your mood, which in turn affects your music. Cool. So that's just the Midwest, period. You grew up there? Mm -hmm. How was it like? I mean, I think that, like he said, there's shitty parts of the city and there are beautiful parts of the city that are coming back, you know? I mean, there are, there are a lot of artistic and, um, you know, progressive movements that are happening in the city with people coming back and it, it's just thriving. I think that to me, what's most important and whether it got reflected that well in the record or not, to me, it's about the people and it's about boiled down to just hope. I mean, you go through shit every day. Everybody, it doesn't matter if you're from France or wherever you're from, everybody wakes up and they do their job. But at the end of the day, I think that the important thing is the, the people, the will to say, I'm gonna get through this shit and you can believe in something. You have something to believe in. I think that that's hopeful, and I don't mean that to be like corny, but that is, I think that's the spirit of, of Detroit, the spirit of the Midwest, the spirit of the working class, is that as much as we get down on things, at, there's, a, there's a soulfulness to the working class that I think a lot of other people don't, don't get. And that's the majority of us, our working class. That's the other thing, too. It's, it's the vast majority of us as people, so. Cool. Did you, did you move to Detroit to, no. to record the album or? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I went to visit a couple times to, to build on the record and then we came, I went in and we, we booked, Apollo booked the studio and we all recorded it together. It was actually, it was really cool the way we did it because we, one, you know, one session or, you know, one, one weekend or whatever, we did it all. We, we you know, we, had, we recorded the whole album. We were all just like, yeah, we just, we did it. We recorded an album. It was, it was I think, there's something to be said about doing it that way as opposed to spreading it out and emailing tracks and recording and sending back and forth. The way we did it, to me, I'll remember it. And, you know, it's a fond memory of, of how, we, how it went down. Cool. And I'm glad I got to do it in Detroit, too. But how did it happen, you three guys? Like, because you two didn't know each <clears> other. <throat> like, Apollo made you listen to some beats and you were like, all right, that one, that one. How did it happen? I mean, basically, he sent us, he, he, he had in mind a, a good, a, you know, a batch of beats that he wanted us to go through. And he, I mean, we ended up using, what, 80% of everything you sent, right? Yeah, I, I, you know, obviously at a certain... He orchestrated uh, it, basically. A certain sound yeah. I wanted to go with, so... Yeah, so he, um, at first he sent us maybe, 
uh, you know, five, five at a time, I think it was, right? Like he would send us five and we'd be like, oh shit, this, you know, yeah, 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 okay. And we, there wasn't anything we didn't like. It was just sometimes we were more enthusiastic or we just, and then Chris and I would talk on the phone and just go back and forth and just feel each track out and we let him know what we were feeling. But we didn't really perform the verse. We didn't really know what each other were doing. Yeah. You know, like I it did a couple of, I did some, I remember I recorded some roughs just to mess around. But overall, we really just kind of all brought it together and we're just, this is what we have. And it just kind of really, it was, I mean, if you guys remember, it was, it was, I thought it was pretty cool. I mean, it just like sounded right. No, we were just like, this is it. Place. Yeah. yeah it was just place. like, this is it. It it's worked. Crazy. And I think that that's, that's a testament to this guy's ear. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it to is. Be able 100%. To, to be able to hear because, when I heard Verbal Kent, because like I said, we hadn't really heard each other. So when I heard his shit and Apollo said, yeah, this is who the other guy in the album is going to be, I was like, okay. I mean, it wasn't that I didn't think it was dope, but it was, and I'm sure you, the same thing. It was like, we can both rap. And then when I spoke to him, it, it was immediate, like, I mean. Yeah, when we started actually yeah, talking cool. like, over concepts, it was like, just right away. Yeah. We it was like we knew each and, other. And we didn't even have to, I just trust, I think there was a trust, like, because like you said, when we came, when we came together, I had only heard rough versions of his verses and we put it all together. And I think that, I think there was an interesting thing to that because we weren't working on these songs like sitting together in the same room. So they were able to kind of, it was still able to be Verbal Kent, it was still able to be Red Pill and then the Apollo Brown beats and our, our concepts brought the whole thing together. So mm -hmm. it was cohesive and it started. We didn't, yeah, we didn't try to be, I didn't try to rap a particular way over an Apollo Brown beat. And he didn't try to write to mesh with my writing, right. which is I think why it worked. Yeah, you know no, I mean? yeah. Because yeah. if, if we had all tried to like, be, we're gonna be in a group, that doesn't usually work. You know what I mean? And if it does, you need like a some master pro super producer on the side. I and mean, we're not a boy band, so it doesn't work that way. So. Right. So yeah, to me, it gave me a lot of, like at the, at the time when you hit me up about it, it gave me a lot of confidence and it kind of brought me back into yeah, a really hard, strong, I was just like, this is, you know, there is a lot to be said about the art form, you know, that you can, that people can come together like that and create a project like that. It's cool, cause you know, there's a lot of different ways of going about doing something like this, as you know, so yeah. Cool. It worked out. Can you talk a little bit about the music you choose to play? Oh, Why I just, did you I, choose that? And I, I, I put on Big L, one of the best ever. Um, I really just wanted to hear MVP and uh, put it on, but I'm letting it play. <laughs> cool, cool. Big L, man, you know. Can you talk a little bit about the way you do music yourself? I don't know why, but I feel like your beats are really deep. Like every time your kick and snare hit me like that, and I, I don't know. Um, I mean, the way I make beats is, is it, it's just all based on feeling. Like I can't make a beat I don't listen to music that doesn't have feeling, and I can't make music that doesn't have feeling. Even if it's a life track or if it's just a hard banger, it still has to have feeling. That's to take me somewhere, you know. And, and, and if I'm making something that doesn't have feeling, then I'm throwing it away because um, it just it has to take me somewhere. It has to be kind of like a backdrop for reflection. I've never heard an Apollo Brown beat that doesn't have feeling to it. It has to have feeling to it. Like I just that's how that's how I grew up listening to music. You know, you listen to music, there's certain albums and certain songs that can just take you away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You're like, you're, you're listening to a song and some people have those go-to songs that when they're in a certain mood, they just go to those songs or albums mm. because they know they're going to take them away. And that's just kind of how I produce, man. I, I just, I need feeling in the track. A lot of today's music is just a bunch of sounds, just a bunch of bleeps and sounds and there's no feeling whatsoever. And um, I just I can't get with that man, and that's you know that's what I base my my production off of. It's just how I feel, and, and and the feeling that's put into it, and the feeling that comes out of it after it's done. Like for example, what do you? What's the last thing that blow you away? As far as what? Other people's music. Other people's yeah, music. Yeah. Other. Yeah. Oh, um, probably like I'm right now. I'm listening to Step Brothers. You know that's that's a pretty good album. I like that album a lot. Um, I'm a big Rock Marciano fan. Um, that album's dope. The last album, the uh, Marcy Buku, yeah, that's real dope. Um, Sound of the Weapon. He just came out with a dope ass album uh, yesterday. Yeah. So um, great album. I've been listening to it for months, so it's not new to me. But <laughs> it's to him. Apollo being behind it was a big motivator for me too. Because you never know. Yeah, you it's know. a dope album. I, mean, I appreciate all, that. It goes. Yeah. It takes you on a roller coaster, just how it should. That's how I like to make albums, roller coasters. And I, I want to play with your feelings and play with your moods. You know, I want you to be hype one minute and the next minute. I want you to be 
crying on your mom's shoulder. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just two different ends of the spectrum. And, but, um, and I think, I don't think it's a coincidence. I feel like it's my best album. I don't feel like it's a coincidence that after we worked on the Ugly Heroes record, I was I able think, to put um, together my best album, you know? It no, makes sense. I mean, I just think that, you know, um, bringing out the passion and life in you was, uh, was yeah. a good idea. Because yeah. you're, you're rah, 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 rah. You've always been rah, 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 rah. Mm -hmm. And making you sit down and actually do some life type stuff, man, yeah. it's just, yeah, it's it, it brings out a whole different verbal cant. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's, um, that, was, that was a great thing. That's true. And it showed in that album. Yeah. And, and yeah, Sound of the Weapons, dope. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's albums out here. There's a lot of good music out here. Um, you just gotta feel it. Cool. What do you listen to these days? Lately, um, I've been listening to, uh, I like all the TDE guys, man. I, I got that Isaiah Rashad shit. I think I it's really that dope. Yet. He's really dope, man. I mean, it's like, it's new school shit. I mean, um, you know, I have my, my influences and shit from back when, but I try to stay current, man. Danny Brown's album was really fucking dope. Uh, uh, I can't wait to, I haven't heard it yet. I know just, they just got it streaming that Schoolboy Q. I know I want to hear that. Um, and then uh, Bishop Nauru. He's a dope kid coming up. Um, man, I don't know. The other thing that I think that what's dope about working with Mellow Music Group is I was a fan of all of these guys. You know what I mean? Like of Odyssey, of YU, Diamond District, um, Stick Figure, and those guys. So when I got involved with this, this was like, I'm getting, I'm here at a level that I was looking at three years before going, how the fuck do I get there? How do I get to where they're at? Um, and you learn a lot along the way, but... Um, I'm a fan of the music that the Mellow Music Group is putting out. I mean, I listen to, like I said, these are not just label mates. These are actual, I'm fans of their music, and I look up to these people. So um, Odyssey, fucking Tangible Dream, last year was incredible. Yeah, that's I mean, that album. was one of the dopest albums of last year, mm -hmm. without a doubt. So that's the shit that I'm listening to. Cool. What about you? Man, I don't, uh, I don't listen to enough music, to be honest with you. I, I spend a lot of time... Uh, writing to instrumentals, a lot of time playing his instrumentals, and, and you know, uh, I've been working on a project with Illmind uh, on and off, and I've been working on that. So I, you know, I, I'm so busy that I'm in the car and I just play instrumentals and I write and I write and I write. So the, the, the people that I that I'm impressed with that I check for, I guess uh, I'm kind of interested in the TDE stuff too nowadays. I mean, I don't. Like not, Kendrick and you know all yeah, the, like the Kendrick are, album was interesting to me. That was a really really powerful album, and I don't care. People, I know people say have different opinions on it. I I thought it was one of the like one of the most interesting album, interesting for sure albums to come out in years in hip hop. You know, from the mainstream level yeah. for sure, or any on any level. So I, I definitely played that for a while when I when that came out, and I listened to uh, I really like the Brown Tape. Brown I really like the awesome. what Apollo did with Ghostface. That was mean. Yeah. That that was fun hearing him do that. It made me proud, and I was like, man, I got to listen to Ghostface and Apollo Brown. That was pretty cool. What else came out this year that I liked? Man, I feel like again, I feel like I'm just I spend so much time just like self-involved, yeah. just working on stuff. I mean, and that's that's fair too. It is. I think like when we a lot of times I get asked that question, and really it's just like I'm generally behind as fuck. Like I'll an album will I don't I'm on not up on stuff, shit yeah. as much because the albums will come out. And there's so many of them that I don't know how, like, as a fan of music, I don't even know how I would keep up with. Because people will talk about how hip hop is this and that nowadays. There's so much good shit coming out right now. So much good shit. All around the world, there's good shit coming out. So I think that trying to stay up on it, I mean, I'm kind of with you. I was just lucky that I had some names that I could throw out because I, I was going to be stumped. Like, I heard him and I was running through, like, who am I going to say? <laughs> yeah. Because, you, know, you know, I don't know. Like, I listen to shit a lot, but it's hard to. It's hard to keep up, and you're wrapped up in your own shit, man. I'm, yeah. st I'm still, you know, like they said about me in what, Spin Magazine, it was like, I'm stuck in 1993. So, <laughs> and I, I co sign it. I'm stuck in 1993. I'm listening to that Keith like, Murray. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm still a 90s head. Yeah. Is that what you feel for real? I'm still yeah. a 90s head, yeah. I mean, I, I put my kind of newer spin on it, but. Yeah, that's what I feel myself. I put it, but, but it's still boom bap to me, man. It's still like, that's where I'm from. That's, that's when I grew up, you know. That's where music was really vital and instrumental in the things that I do now. And, and I mean, I'm 33 years old, man. I'm a, I've, I've been around for a minute. And um, that was, 90s was, I'm, st I'm stuck there. 
you know, with that, that sound. And that's when music really had feeling to me, you know? Again, so to me, I think um, that shit is it's coming back though too. Like, no, I, it's definitely I, coming yeah. back. And the kids, you know, there's young back. kids that like are 17, 18 years old that are really, really fucking with like tribe sound, tribe sound and shit, and Dilla sound and shit. And and I'm watching these kids, like even in like the Detroit scene, like younger kids that people will hear about over the next few years. And I'm like, I'm just impressed, man. I'm yeah, like, these yeah, it's kids definitely fucking, coming back, and that's they good. They love yeah. lyrics again. They love, and I, I don't really give a shit. Like, I'm not like a purist as far as hip hop, but it is cool to see like there's there's emotion coming back. Like you said, there's feeling coming back into hip hop. It needs to come back on a higher gone. level though. Yeah. To me. It needs to come back on a you know, we're we're considered underground or whatever, but you know, in the mainstream, I think uh, it needs to come back in the mainstream. I think know? it's bleeding through. I yeah, really it do. probably will. I think it's bleeding I through. I think, you know all it really takes to me in my opinion is for Jay Z to do an album with DJ Premier, yeah. right? Some, that's something. all it takes. Yeah, because then all the rest, all the rest of the mainstream artists will start to try to fall in line. Because everybody does what Jay Z does. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. Jay Z said, "Don't wear any more um, throwback jerseys and wear button ups." Now everybody threw their jerseys away and started wearing button ups. Whatever he says, pretty much everybody does. So, I think if Jay Z did a whole album with Premier. Everybody else will follow suit, not just with Premiere, but trying to find producers that have that sound mm. and bring hip hop all the way back. I mean, yeah. you know, on a higher level. I mean, it's here. It's here in the underground. I'm waiting for that it to ain't happen. Going nowhere. I'm waiting for that to happen in like in, in basketball. I know this is a little far stretch, but like I play a lot of basketball. And the younger kids, they play like the new breed of, bas- of NBA players. No, you don't see anybody fading off the left leg or anything like that, like Jordan or Kobe anymore. It's the same thing. It's like I, it's just funny for me because I'm I'm older. I'm older also, you know, and I see the same thing on the courts. I'm waiting for like, waiting for people to like pick up the styles of the '90s. Because for me, growing up in the '90s, like I, I like in Chicago too. Like I relate music is very related to the Bulls and to Jordan. And so, like '92 was the best year for hip hop, right? One of the best years for hip hop, and that was the Bulls' second championship. And so I grew up, went through all 91, 92, 93, you know, like that was my whole era. That was the era, the Jordan era. And so I like, I have this like, this distinct cold like relationship between like good 90s hip hop and basketball. It's just this thing in my, that's deep within me. You know? Cool, cool. It's all good. Yeah. Well, just to finish, if you guys feel like probably showing us a little bit what you do, rapping or stuff like that. I don't know, I could. I don't, do you want I mean, to? I can do a verse. I'll go ahead, do you like go ahead. Team. Go ahead. You're put me on the spot. I'm gonna go do you want to? Do you want to? You want him to throw a beat on for him, or you just want go him to rap? Red pill, go red pill. How do you feel? Do you want to do it a cappella? Do you want a beat or? No, rock that shit a cappella, man. All right, yeah. fine. I'll do some a cappella. Right, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, fine. I'm gonna do some old shit though. Yeah, yeah go ahead. ahead. No right, problem. Do, some shit. do whatever you want, dude. <laughs> go ahead. Um, so call me that. Illegitimate ill spitter, let pill grip a motherfucking mic and watch the whole city feel bitter. Maybe you'd feel better snorting up this pill with the real dinner instead of that fast food they fill in you. Maybe you'd still get a chill in you. Feeling that arctic wind I breathe, remember what it's like to feel winter. What I instill in you is documented dominance, the consequence of ill fortune's provenance. My prominence is ominous. It's fucking obvious to me that when I'm spitting, there's a God in this. They say your pops has been monotonous. And if I'm honest, I can feel that, but I know I'm not the problem, bitch. So let me give you this one chance to jump on this bandwagon before you stands act like we go back. I give you amnesty right now to stand to me right now to act like you give a fuck what I write down. Cause what I breathe on this mic now is easily equal to anything deemed to be dope or what is hype out. I flip a pair of fucking paragraphs and make you have to tear a half a page and rearrange it just to hear it back. The hair. Yeah. That's the hair right there. <laughs> the hair and the Jew. The Let's hair. do it. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm good, man. I'm good. I, that was... Uh, that was that was a nice verse. Just spit one of your favorite verses, cause that's right. what I just did. So I'm not. It wasn't like I was just fucking talking cool. some crazy All right, shit. All right, check it. <laughs> Mommy, look, Dan's Armstrong, cream and clear in the rear, Lance Armstrong. Instagram for my fans, Brett Favre schlong. Get thrown yards by your arms, Brett Favre bomb. Vaporized marijuana in the car, son. Bring for breeze, QPs up in the car, son. Uh, smoke daily like car sun, getting car sick, barf up, look like a parfait. Blueberry in the spliff, bumping Marv Gay. New boxer shorts from the Target, which is 
Which is true. Which is relevant to, yeah. <laughs> relevant to now. <laughs> $5 toothpaste, all black dog bags, ankle weights, so I can have the same hops Kermit Frog has. Used to call my Knicks Kermit Frog bags. Lime green like the sheen Kermit Frog has. Just stop the broadcast and suck my cock and balls. You don't want beef eat a pita falafel balls. <laughs> <laughs> that was a perfect verbal Watch pepper. Yeah, yeah, but it was nice. totally, but it was totally but opposite but of what, that's like, shit. That's that ugly it's heroes. true. Yeah. That's Watch. exactly that's what true. it is. That's true. <laughs> so. that's true. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Yeah, man, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks, thanks for bro. rapping. Thanks for, thanks for me, everything. Yeah. Have a good show Thank tonight. You, Appreciate Cheers. it. Cheers. Appreciate you letting me. <laughs> uh, uh, cool. All right, man. Cool. No I'm out. Appreciate it. E-pop station. Round two. Fight. Hold up. 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 Sock it. Hold up. 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 Sock it. J.O. Parfait, je vois que les plus curieux sont restés. L'année dernière, j'ai eu une petite accroche avec un journaliste qui s'appelle Vincent Degré autour d'une histoire comme quoi il aurait fait découvrir un sample de Charles Aznavour à Apollo Brown. Apollo Brown revient cette année, esprit coubertin, je lui propose de venir sur le plateau et de lui faire écouter le vinyle en question qu'on sache si jamais il l'a utilisé ou pas. Mais Kaku, comme le garçon est, le v'là rendu sur Twitter à me mettre des pressions, à venir me voir en face pour me dire je vais venir sur le plateau et foutre la merde, et à m'inviter à une émission de radio pour me mettre à défaut en direct. Je vous fais écouter. Donc on est invité quel jour avec Romain J'ai pas, pas <rire> compris concrètement. Alors le... toi, tu es invité le... Alors bah, si, si ça se fait, hein, ça serait le, le 20 sûrement. Euh, tu pourrais venir faire écouter un petit... Euh... Un petit vinyle à, à Apollo Brand, si je souviens de toi, mais... T'as trop ouvert ta gueule et t'es pas venu, Doud.